every picture of I tell I tell them at the church Barry Gibb. Barry Gibb is the guy who's the portrait of Jesus, basically. Blue eyes, you know, he looks more like you than he does the Palestinian guy. Yeah. Handsome guy. And handsome. He's very handsome. He, without the hat. He, but if, if, you, if you know how they say nothing's ever free, well, that's a myth with track stars. Send us your music. We'll add it to SoundCloud for free. There's also an opportunity for you to be able to get your song aired on the radio. For more information, email us at contactus at trackstars.com. All right, back in the field with the track stars, Ryan Wright, Sean Tanner, DJ Jeremiah. What's good? All right, for all things track stars, visit www.trackstars.com. Follow us on Instagram at track stars, Twitter at track stars, like the Facebook page, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. All right, so uh, one last piece of the Black Panther. Again, this is a spoiler day. Um, this is the last spoiler topic for Black Panther. Uh, we wanted to get into the religious aspect of Black Panther. So now, um, uh, I didn't, I didn't take offense to any of it like they're basically saying this is how it was you know this is how it is um where they they there are african tribes that believe in you know their ancestors and certain gods you know things like that but there is a movement um where there are a lot of people who are are adopting this philosophy um mm -hmm. the moors the the hebrew israelites the 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 comedic uh, science people um so we w did want to address that and not leave it un unsaid because there are there is a push towards that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, we got Pastor Stefan Bell here with us. Um, uh, Pastor Stefan has a passion for apologetics, and Absolutely. he's done he's done teaching on it a lot at our church. And um, I wanted him to kind of speak to that and kind of give light. If, if anybody is kind of being pulled towards this or gravitating towards this, like how do we how do we as Christians respond, and what's the the answer to this type of thinking? You know what? I think the movie is a great representation of the heart of many of us we'll go back to Killmonger again yeah. um, let me just first of all say I'm a, a hurt African American I'm one why am I hurt if I look at the history of where we come from how we've been left out how our story has been left out even out of the scriptures you know you, you ask yourself how could a Palestinian man go hide out in Egypt and not be found if he were Europe, of European descent mm. you ask these questions you ask the stories of why when you google Simon the Cyrene 70 percent of the pictures are not a, a, of a man of color and you so you get angry you, you know the story of the Crusades of Catholicism you know those stories of course you know how the Bible was used during slavery to subject to to further push that subjection and so when you hear all this stuff man and you don't study for yourself what happens is you want an alternative mm. you want something that empowers you you want to become killmonger mm. and you want to you want to do something so yes at divine order church we call it the doc in marietta we teach apologetics we talk about we teach other belief systems and worldviews purposefully in fact we're going to start this is a shameless plug <laughs> <laughs> we're going to start in march with a session called the proof and it's going to be uh, basically all the papyri, all the the stones, all the obel obel obelisk, and those things that prove the Bible is real. Mm. Who, who is Tertullian? Who is uh, uh, Alexander? Uh, 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 sorry, uh, Clement of Alexandria. Who are all these brothers who helped push this thing called Christianity that was actually hijacked by people who knew the power of it? Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about the proof for the rest of the year. Mm. Every every uh, week uh, through October, we're going to be talking about the proof of everything you can put your hands on when it comes to Christianity. But let me go back to the thought. When you look at groups uh, in the, the movie, for example, one belief system or worldview that comes to my attention is actually comedic science. Um, mm -hmm. And the reason is, if you know anything about comedic science, they go back to the, the thought process of Egyptology. And with Egyptology, if you know the founding of it, man, it's so it's it's heartbreaking for me as a pastor, a teacher of urban apologetics, that to see my people fall for such lies, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just it's just deceit and lies. But it feels good. It feels great to be able to, t to be told. Number one, you you you're from you're basically from the bloodline of Egyptians, so you're the first people you you are from the bloodline of moors the first people you're from the bloodline of the original hebrews anything that makes you feel like you have power christianity hadn't done that traditionally mm. it's told african americans you're the least of this faith every picture of i tell i tell them at the church barry gibb barry gibb is the guy who's the portrait of jesus basically blue eyes <laughs> you know he looks more like you than he does the palestinian guy yeah. handsome guy and handsome he's very handsome he, <laughs> without the hat he, but if if you if you look at that and you you're a young african-american you wanting something you want a faith you want to feel like you have a connectivity or a relationship with something i probably wouldn't do it 
If some guy comes up to me and tells me, do you realize that this is the book that was used to hold you back? Mm -hmm. And so what happens with comedic science is that they say you're, an orig you're basically uh, descendants of Egyptians. So what does that mean? You need to actually, what they call, uh, pay tribute to the Aku, which is their actual descendants and ancestors. Yeah. And so you've got to, let me tell you something, as a Christian, I am with that all the way. But they're not my gods. Well, they are some, and my ancestors. And when you look at the Egyptian faith, there's so many um, disparities, this, 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 uh, there's so many bad teachings, let's just put it that mm. way, with Egyptology that it comes from what we call esoteric thought process, where these Europeans were anti-Christian. And they said, let's find a way to go against Christianity. So they had one guy, his name was Gerald Massey. He went over and he went to Egypt, he did all this looking around. He comes back and he writes these books. But what he was saying is that the true people in the Bible were of African descent. But what the whites wanted and the European whites wanted is for him to change his, his paradigm. You can say that every, everything Christian comes from Egypt, but just don't make it black. Don't make it black. Don't do that. But he's still saying black. So later on, you have this guy named Wallace Budge, another lady by the name of uh, Blavansky. They come out and say, we can fund this thing. We're going to do it our way. We're going to make it look less dark, for lack of a better word. And so you end up with a teaching that actually died off in the early 1900s um, after this big push in the 1800s. It comes back. Her name is Tamara Suda. It's 1988. Fight the power, right? You got this sister growing up with the public enemy. She's this, this Caucasian female. She's in Harlem and she starts talking about this thing called called comedic science and Egyptology, empowering people. If you see that, if you look, Google her, and you'll see this picture of this woman who looks like Tina Marie and she, she's surrounded by young black people. And she's teaching them, you're empowered, you're empowered by this thing called comedic science or, or even uh, Egyptology. It makes you feel empowered. So what I would say to anyone listening today is, you know, there were a lot of lies. There's a lot of hurt. There's a lot of deceit by our in our history. But we can't let that be an excuse to fall prey to these worldviews that is totally fallacy. And that's why I would start this segment. I, I would love to see you watch uh, B Dot versus Loso. Yeah. Do we, uh, yeah, 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 there's yeah. a battle. There's, there's a we have an artist in our on our squad. He's a battle rapper. Okay. Is that, is mm -hmm. that the name? Yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. Yeah, but <laughs> He's a battle that. rapper. <laughs> I get that. Um, and he battled this guy named B Dot. And B Dot is all about this. Okay. You know, uh, worshiping ancestors yeah. and all this stuff. And he, you know, he, he broke him down and did all that. Um, but um, it is it is a big thing in that world, especially. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is. It's, it's one of those things where people are like, because a lot of battle rap. Of course, it's on the West Coast, but it's also on the East Coast. And a lot mm -hmm. of East Coast stuff is, like, cause I remember growing up on the East Coast, and you had churches, and we at, it's church, and you have Christians, but then you also have Islam, and you have five percenters, and you have oh, these different types of um, um, faith that people have and stuff right. like that, which is um, funny because when I'm listening to you talking and hearing about it, it's like, it's funny that white people... <laughs> funded that <laughs> not, not on the, on the, on that level but just the funny is that and then you go around and say that 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 person used that as your let me tell you something Bible. it is nothing that b dot will spew today zero nothing he will say that doesn't originate from the people i'm talking about mm -hmm. everything comes from gerald mass in his writings it comes from him and hb bavosky who's a who's actually a russian ukrainian area female who was just they're all anti-christian Mm. They're esoteric, they're into mysticism. And they were like, hey, let's push, let's push. And let me tell you something. Whenever you're talking about these new world views, and I call them new because they actually are, when you talk about these new world views, the way to really talk to them is go back and tell the true history. Where did it come from? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about this. B Doc doesn't want to talk about that. He's going to want to talk about what he believes, but not where it came from. What well, he feels. Horus, or he's going to say Horus, or he's going to say. And, and that's yeah. garbage. Yeah. So, and so, what, what I, yeah. I'm sorry, should I say that? <laughs> Pastor. <laughs> And so when you even talk about Horus and those types yeah. of things, this this guy right here is a nerd also. I t you know, they always say that all the time. And so when I was in college, I actually studied Greek and Roman mythology. How nerd is that? A brother from Southwest, <laughs> we know, to Birmingham, Alabama, studying Greek and Roman mythology. And so when I started hearing this stuff in the 90s and 2000, I'm like, none of that stuff's in Greek and Roman mythology. None of the stuff about Horus, for example, Horus being crucified. Horus never died in Greek and Roman, Roman, Roman mythology. So how are you going to tell me that? You're going to tell me that he was a teacher at the early age of 12? No, he was hidden out in, in, in the swamps until he was able to lead Egypt. All this mm. stuff is lies. 
And so for me as yeah. a teacher at Divine Order Church in Marietta, Georgia, 1485 <laughs> South Maria Parkway, my, my job. So, service time. Service time. Service time is 10 o'clock. We teach the word. I don't, do, I don't know how to hoop, so I'm not going to do it. And so <laughs> and when we teach this stuff, all I want to do is share facts. Yeah. I'm not here to bash anybody's thought process because this brother is, it feels it's important to pay tribute to my ancestors. Yeah. But they're not going to be my gods. So I'm not going to do that. I have one more question for you. Please. Um, mm-hmm. What do you tell to people? Because another thing was deciphering what, when you watch the battle, what we were talking about. He was talking about, b was talking about also that um, the commandments mm-hmm. that they took, the, we took their commandments mm-hmm. and all this other stuff. And I, I can't go into detail about what he said because I can't really remember all of them. But he was basically saying that we ripped off, um, the Christians ripped off his, his ancestors for the information. What he, what he was uh, actually discussing is the 42 laws of my uh, M-A apostrophe A-T. And what those laws are, 42 laws to live by. Um, and if you look at them, there's so many of them, you're going to see some similarities, but they're not the same. Um, oftentimes with, uh, com- with those who believe in the comedic faith, they will actually um, <laughs> They make up stuff. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and you can't, and, and what, what you do, and for anyone who's listening, you talk, run into someone who deals with this, this worldview, is always ask the question, can you show me a primary source of anything that you're talking about? And they'll say, well, it's come from the Book of the Dead. I say, show me your copy of the Book of the Dead. Where'd it come from? There's one papyrus that is actually called the Book of the Dead. Let me tell you what the Book of the Dead is. I'll do this real quick, I promise. Mm-hmm. What the Book of the Dead is, is when Egyptians would actually die, they didn't believe in resurrection. So whenever you hear anything about Horus resurrection, no, Egyptians didn't believe that. What they believed is when you die, you put a, a, a ex, whether you put it in their casket or in their tomb, you gave them direction of how to operate in the dead system, how to do it correctly. So when you are to come back and meet your God and you have to look at the scales and see what was balanced and, and if your life was lived correctly, you'll know how to move in that death realm. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't cause it's, no. yeah. it's, a, it's so, a manual. It's a manual. It's basically a manual that puts... So when you wake up in your world, you know how to how operate. To move, who, how exactly. to operate. So it wasn't oh, the death, the book of the dead is not one book. It's multiple books. They found one papyrus that shows you how this individual was, was told by his family how to operate when he wakes up from the, in the dead, yeah. in the dead realm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm. So, uh, for us as Christians, the primary source argument is very important, but also have a heart for those who you're talking to. Mm-hmm. One wow. thing that's happening right now with with Egyptology and comedic faith, just like it has before, is dying off. There are other worldviews that are stronger because they're starting to attach themselves to Christianity, mm-hmm. because Christianity is not going anywhere. Yeah. And so, mm-hmm. if you can attach yourself to it, take your old beliefs and bring in some Jesus Christ. You can last longer. So you're seeing a death of the belief system, but it's still brothers out there and brothers and sisters and others who are just stuck with this. It sounds so good. The first thing mm. you're gonna do is attack Christianity. And if you can attack that enough, it can shake up the foundation of the person you're talking to. So that's why we teach apologetics. So don't get angry, get educated. Absolutely. Mm. All right. No, please, don't. no more yeah. battle raps. We don't need that. <laughs> you know, I think, I think Shantana, you said it best. It's the opportunity just to sit down. Yeah. I had one of our members say, a um, guy approached her, and, and I told her, I said, dude, what did you say to him? She said, I was afraid. I said, why? It's an opportunity for you to sit down and say, let me ask you some questions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And just share that. I think people don't know. I think people don't have, Christians don't are not, not saying ready, but they're not armed, and they don't have the stuff ready to not just spit it verbatim, but mm-hmm. just in them to be like, I know how to defend but my you, faith. It's, it's okay for you to yeah. say, I'm going to take what you said, I'm going to think about yeah. it, and let's have another conversation when yeah, I go absolutely. do some research. You shouldn't be afraid to say, I don't know. And well, I think I'm that's find what out. it is. Yeah, I think you don't a lot have of to have nothing wrong with that. Because you're in front of, at times, and you watch videos online, mm-hmm. a lot of these people are got big crowds with them, and then you look foolish if you don't know nothing, and you look like, man, I, 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 maybe what I'm saying is wrong. You know what I'm saying? Because when you're on the spot and you don't know, it's just like you look mm-hmm. foolish. That's, that's part of, that's you get, You got to work out. That's yeah. part of getting trained up, you know? Right. Like, yeah. it, you have to pay attention to that stuff. Like, if you, if you go out to battle and you... You didn't do basic training. <laughs> yeah. Like, of course you're yeah. going to get shot up. Like, yeah. so. Well, you know, they, there's a great group of people. I want to send a shout out to all the urban apologists out there. Damon Richardson, Dr. D- Damon Richardson, uh, Vocab Malone, um, Eric Mason. Some of these guys were training pastors. Yeah. Mm. Training pastors how to teach apologetics. 
And so what, what I want to do is just give them a shout out because it's now become something that's spreading out yeah. where you have uh, worldviews such as the Hebrew Israelites who stand on corners and they, they, they are, their targets are, the target is young African Americans. Of course. Yeah. Because when they've gone to church, what are they getting? They're getting hooping and hollering and a great <laughs> praise team and lights are flashing, mm -hmm. but no one's teaching them other worldviews. Mm -hmm. And so what we have is these urban apologists now are teaching pastors how to teach history and understand we don't just do urban uh, belief systems we talked about seven day Adventists, Jehovah's witnesses we just want to share and make yeah. sure everyone's educated about other worldviews and, mm. and they have a website for that too um the same guys you mentioned is urban urban apologetics.com okay all right. or org dot org one of the two all right let's get back into it you in the field with the track stars ryan wright to sean tan the dj jeremiah let go Hey guys, Miracle here. Thank you so much for watching that episode. Make sure you go below, like it, subscribe, click the bell, and make sure you follow us on all forms of our social media. Also, check out our website and be sure you spread the word. We'll see you next time. We know not what we doing. Screw that, they know, let them have it, do it. Okay, I'm around it, prove it. Never mind, got a mind that'll wind up with me in a lineup behind bars with these bars. Okay, my time. <laughs> Team Freedom, yeah. we not through yet. All right. Track Stars Music presents. Turn my volume up, turn me off.